downside to being right next to an airport. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome to uh, hopefully annual eclipse episode. We're trusting science that this is real <laughs> because we can't see the moon. <sighs> so we're in Albuquerque. I gotta get set up quick. It is 9.10 and we have, uh, we have two minutes until first contact. So I'm not gonna do anything crazy for this, but I do wanna get set up for first contact so that you guys can see it. So I can grab a couple clips. Um, we're gonna go over my my plan if I can find the right knob here. There we go. Okay. So I've got the 500. I've got 1.4 teleconverter, 700 millimeters. I spent all night last night. If you follow me on Instagram, then you would have seen all of my stories. Um, about the planning and about framing and Stellarium and all of the fancies and getting the exact timing and framing so I know where to put this up because if you'll notice I don't have a tracker so the big tracker is over there on my friend's thing and he's got an even bigger telescope on his so in lieu of doing a tracker what I'm going to do is we got about four minutes and 20 something seconds of totality so basically at 700 millimeters, I calculated it's gonna take 11 minutes to move diagonally through my frame if I set it up diagonally correctly. So that's gonna give me an 11 minute time lapse. The cool thing about the annular eclipse versus a total eclipse is that I've got, I made my handy dandy little solar filter and I'm gonna, don't worry, I'm gonna take that down. Uh, so I made the solar filter. So the cool thing is because it's an annular eclipse and we're gonna have the ring of fire, I'm not going to have to change my shutters. I'm not gonna have to change my exposure at all like I did during the total eclipse back in 2017. That was a nightmare with three cameras. That was ill-advised. So I'm not gonna have to change it. So I'm gonna be able to leave it. I'm gonna be able to set it and forget it and let this time lapse. And then I'm gonna set up my 70 to 200 and try to do some wider stuff. So we picked this spot because there's a nice volcano right there. And I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of trickery and, and pano, vertical pano stitching to get the whole thing in the frame. But I'll sh I'm gonna show you guys that uh, in just a minute. Let me get through this and see if I can see first contact first. So we had to switch to the phone now. So many problems, <laughs> but nothing luckily with the actual cameras, just with recording and the mic. So sorry about the wind. Here we are in Sun Surveyor. All right, so check this out. R6 Mark II, 2470 at 70 mil. I'm gonna switch out to the 70 to 200, but I just wanna show you guys how I'm lining this up. What is this doing? Oh, there we go. Okay, so it's just, you see that it just like calibrated itself, so snap. So you can see where the sun's at and you can see where it's going to move to. All right, so if we come out here and we go to photo pills. All right, so in photo pills, I've said it, it has a, a thing where you can change the focal length and, but it, it, you can't put it in. It has a 67 millimeter by default, which is 70 millimeters, which is okay. So if we look here, we can see the mountain and we can see at 70 millimeters, it's going to be just out of frame. So this is what I was talking about when I'm gonna to have to shift. I'm gonna to have to do a vertical pano and take one uh, at 70 and get the most and then pan up a little bit and then take the shot. So I'm also gonna zoom in at 135 and at 200 mils and I'm gonna take the shot of the mountain and get the, the volcano and get the light and everything where I want it. And then I'm gonna take the same shots at 135 and 200 of the eclipse, we have four minutes that I have to do this to get the exposure of the moon uh, and the sun, to get the exposure of the ring of fire. And then what I'm gonna do is, uh, we're gonna have to kind of vertical pano that and then smush it so that you can see it uh, and it'll look more natural. But we'll, we'll explain that because after we get done here, we're gonna go back into the studio and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I'm editing this. But I wanted to show you this setup first and then the augmented reality of how I'm using that with photo pills. So for now, I'm gonna go get ready and start this time-lapse and then we'll get that going. 
So once the time lapse is going with the 500, then I don't have to worry about it because I'm gonna let it drift right through and I've got it all set up. I calculated the time I put into Stellarium, my focal length and everything and, and where the sun was gonna be. So I calculated at like 10, 20, six or whatever it is i'm gonna have to 10 21 um i'm gonna have to line up the sun at the 500 to where it's in the bottom left corner and then lock my tripod down and then it'll drift diagonally through and i'm gonna have it take a, a shot every two seconds for a time lapse that's going to give me about a, an effective elapsed time of 10 second video uh 8k which is going to be really nice and then while that's going i'll be free to mess with this so let's go get that set up because we only got a couple minutes Well, I think that was a partial success. It was at least a success in the part that mattered. So I got the 500 time-lapsing and I had the teleconverter on there. So 700 millimeter time-lapse for the uh, five, well, for 10 minutes through totality. So now uh, I'm not sure if the 70 to 200 shots are gonna work out. If they're gonna take a lot of effort if they do at all. But right now it's definitely tea time because camera lady is quite cold and we are quite thirsty. So we're gonna make some tea and I'm gonna take a few more shots as it exits with the 500 that's still going. And then we're gonna head home. I got four hours to drive back to the studio and I will see you in the studio and hopefully we'll have a couple images to work with. successful it was good to be home I actually went ahead and edited the images without you guys because I was really worried uh, that the wider shot wouldn't come out with the 70 to 200 and that I wasn't gonna be happy with it at all and I didn't want to just like film it and waste everybody's time so I will though I think I'm okay with it uh, it's still not maybe what I had in my head or what I would hoped for but I will go ahead and show you guys the step-by-step -step of what I did so you can see like my thought process behind trying to put together a composite that would be, I mean, it's still a composite, it's still an artistic rendering, but it, I wanted something that would like capture the feel of what it was like to be there as best I could. So let's jump in the computer and I'll show you what's up. Okay, so here's a bunch of test images that I took the day before when it was completely clear. Uh, and then some balloons because it was Balloon Fiesta. I think a lot of people were hoping to get balloons in the shot, but that just wasn't happening. All right, so you can see the actual clouds. This was the morning of, and fortunately they cleared off pretty good by the time it got up there. But okay, so here you can see this is 70 millimeters, and then you can see where the sun was. I mean, it was just a couple of degrees right out of frame. So that's at 70. And then there's also with the 70 to 200, you can see the extreme exposure that we have to do uh, just to even get and I went with this one which is a more natural one as opposed to this which just looks a little faker if you're trying to composite that in because naturally the sun's going to just give off a lot of ambient brightness here so then you can see the images here the 135 one is the one I went up going ended up going for so let's look in here and I'll show you kind of what I did so this is what we started with and this is the right exposure and everything that I took uh, during totality, you can see it's a lot darker and I intentionally kept it a little bit underexposed so that you could get that feeling of it is darkening up, but it was an annular clip, so we still have a little brightness. So we started with that and then I put the, the moon in there, the eclipse. So, and that's 
pretty much appropriately sized for 135. I wanted to keep the focal length of the foreground and the, the eclipse uh, the same, so that it was just a little more realistic. And then a little bit of adjustments there. So I added just a little bit of a, a blur there on it just to make it not so crisp. Again, going for a natural, uh, more of a natural look. And, oh, and that's just cleaning up the foreground a little bit, took a couple things out. And then the curves. So that's kind of all I did for this. And I mean, all, like, it's not that intense for Photoshop considering what you probably could do. But it, they were just a few minor adjustments and basically it was just making sure I just, you know, all I really did was, aside from getting the the exposures, you know, from the totality and the foreground, all I really did was just bring the, but as you saw, like, as I showed in photo pills and my apps and stuff, like, that's, that's where the sun was. It was right above this. So I basically just brought it down about 10 degrees and I still wanted it to be high in the sky. That's why I put it on the edge of the frame. It's just to give you that sense of like, it's up there, you know? So it's definitely not the best composite or anything like that, but you know, I'm just, I'm trying to go for a little more realism and just capture that feeling of what it was like to be out there and to see that thing live and to to feel the ambient light drop and the ambient temperature drop like camera lady had to put on an extra jacket for you know about 20 minutes and i just kind of want all of that that's why i left it a little bit cooler too and the temperature wise and it, it you know it just hopefully it gives off those vibes of like this is a little otherworldly but still like mostly legit <laughs> I did one at 70 also, and this is the one at 70. Um, I'm not sure which one I like more. Obviously the sun is smaller at 70 millimeters. Again, I tried to keep it focal length appropriate so that we could get a sense of scale here. This one's cool and it's a little more accurate because I only brought the sun down by, you know, a couple of degrees instead of like 10 degrees. But then you kind of lose the sense of scale with the mountain, uh, with the volcano and everything. And it's a little harder to see the people that are standing there in the in the, the left corner. Camera lady said she liked the tighter one better at 135. So that's the one I went with. And then I've just got this guy, which is just a straight up still pulled from the time lapse uh, with the 500 and 1.4 on there. So this is 700 millimeters. This is cropped in 40%, so it's cropped in 60%, so quite a bit. Nothing fancy. That's just the straight ring of fire, and there's no prominences or flares or anything like that. And then we got this guy from midway through, and I like this one just because it has a sunspot there kind of right next to the moon, and I thought that was just about the only interesting feature. Otherwise, I knew this going into it. This is kind of like basically what everybody's going to get for the annular eclipse for photos wise because i knew it was just too high in the sky for me to find anything to put in a foreground like legitimately so this is kind of what you get you get a big long telephoto pointed at uh at the eclipse oh but the only thing i did here was add in the color i added the color back and then I'll show you how I did that real quick. It's stupid easy. I'll just open up one of these. So this is the raw. You can see we got some nice sunspots there. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, all I did really was just slide the temperature over. So we're just going to take the temperature and I'm going to put it all the way over to all the way to the right. And then I brought the vibrance up. And then if you're feeling if you're feeling it, you can just bring up the highlights just a pinch. And that's it. That's uh, that's all I did. So that just gives you your, your color back. And you could tweak that if you want, depending on the level of orangeness or yellowness you want. All right, well, <laughs> that pretty much wraps it up. There's not really anything else to do or show. It was definitely fun from the standpoint of like being out there and getting out to see it in person. It's always amazing to see those types of natural phenomenons. Photography wise, it was kind of run of the mill and I don't want to sound like meh about it, but that's kind of how it was from a photography standpoint, but that's okay because I still had a blast. And you know, the biggest thing is hopefully you got to see it. And if you didn't get to see it, uh, hopefully these images kind of somewhat got even close to doing it justice and gave you an idea of the feeling of it, both the wide and the tight 
images. So let me know in the comments down below what you think of the two, the 70 mil versus the 135 mil. Which one do you like better? Or do they both just look completely ridiculous? <laughs> it's okay, I promise you won't hurt my feelings. But now we're back home and now we're back to regularly scheduled content. I've got some more landscape, wildlife, some gear reviews, got a cool tripod coming up that I think is pretty interesting. Got some phone stuff coming up, a uh, bunch of stuff. I'm gonna try to, the Gila where I live, Southwest New Mexico, is nowhere near fall colors yet. I think we still got about, I would say two weeks at the very earliest for color to start and then four weeks at the latest. That'll put us to mid-November. And that's about on par with when we get fall. So after everybody else has had their fill and you guys are totally sick of fall colors, then I'll finally get my fall colors just in time for mid-November and the holidays. But I'm looking forward to it because it's my favorite time to be out here. Today was still 80 degrees. So, you know, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that temperature dropping a little bit. All right, it's tea time. Hit that like button for me if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. It's the best thing you can do for the channel. Check out the channel memberships if you want some extra content, goodness stuff. And if you made it this far, I really appreciate you for giving me your time. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.